everybody. I hope you had an amazing Christmas yesterday. Jesus is truly something to be celebrated. I am so thankful to God for him sending us his son, Jesus, and I had a wonderful month celebrating Jesus' birthday and all the fun festivities that went along with it, including all the yummy treats. One of my favorite Christmas treats are candy canes. How about you? There are so many different candy cane flavors these days besides just the original peppermint. Some flavors better than others, I must say, but there are definitely options out there. So I thought we'd play a game called Did They Candy Cane It? A candy cane flavor will appear on the screen and you have to guess if it is an actual candy cane flavor before the answer appears. You ready to have some fun with this? All right, here we go. was a fun one. Wasabi flavor? Not sure about that one, although I do like sweet and savory, so maybe I would be a fan. I don't know. All right, friends. Well, we finish up our Christmas season celebration in Matthew 2, 1 through 12. We see how the announcement of Jesus' birth reached people far away. Wise men from the east saw a star that sent them on an adventure to find Jesus. When the wise men finally found Jesus, they worshiped him as king. Let's take a look. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus was born, there was a group of wise men who lived in the Parthian Empire, far to the east of Jerusalem. Now, no one knows why these wise men were looking for a special star, but it could have happened this way. Hundreds of years before, God's people had been defeated and taken as exiles to Babylon. One of them was Daniel, and through God's help, he gained the favor of the king. You will rule over Babylon and take charge of all the other wise men. Now, Daniel held this important role for much of his life, even after Babylon became part of Persia. During this time, he shared his love for God and his knowledge of Jewish scriptures with the other wise men. The Lord is the one true God. He has told me many things that will happen. Over hundreds of years, some of the wise men in Persia continued to study Jewish scriptures, even under different rulers. Many of them may have even remembered Daniel. So when several wise men discovered a brand new star, they knew it meant something important. Look, there in the west, it's a new star rising. Now, we don't know the names of these men or really exactly how many there were, but we'll call them Melchior, Caspar, and Balthazar. A new king, maybe? Oh, ooh, ooh, can we have a party? The wise men hurried to the archive room where they dug through dusty scrolls to find the writings of Jewish prophets. Ah, here are the words of 
Daniel. God had given Daniel some strange visions of a savior who would come and rescue the Jewish people. The time he tells of could be right now, but depending on how you read it. So, party time? And look here at the scroll of numbers. A star will come from among the people of Jacob. A king will rise up out of Israel. The star, the timing. I think this is it. Party time! These wise men did far more than just throw a party. They planned an epic road trip to honor the new king in his own land. I'll pack up the food. I got the heart for some road tunes. Who's got the camels? Ugh, you can handle them. I got the party gifts. The wise men packed up beautiful gifts worthy of a true king. Then they set out on their long journey across the desert. Due west. Follow that star. Oh, I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. Yeah, I think I'm ahead of my time. After many long weeks, the wise men neared the city of Jerusalem. Surely someone will know of this new king. The wise men entered the city, causing a stir with their fine robes and curious questions. Where is the child who's been born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and now we have come to worship him. And we got party gifts. In the palace, King Herod heard news of the foreigners, and he didn't like the sound of a new king. Outrageous. King Herod called on the chief priests and the teachers of the law. Where is this Messiah supposed to be born? Uh, please note my air quotes. In Bethlehem. Humph. Humph. How do you know? They are Prophet Micah, your majesty. He says, uh, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are certainly not the least important among the towns of Judah. Uh, a ruler will come out of you. Uh, he will rule my people Israel uh, like a shepherd. Oh, well, I see. Have these wise men come see me. Uh, keep it on a down low. Soon, the wise men were ushered into the palace. When did this special star appear? At the perfect time for a party. I want you to go to Bethlehem for me. Search for this child and report back when you find him. Then I can go and worship him too. <laughs> Please ignore the air quotes. So the wise men left the palace and immediately continued their journey, following the star for several more miles. Look, it's resting over that little town of Bethlehem and that little house in Bethlehem. Time to party! The wise men soon arrived at the little house where Jesus and his family were staying. Mary and Joseph welcomed them in, and the wise men bowed low before Jesus, who is now a toddler. We brought gifts! The wise men brought out their carefully packed treasures. Gold? Frankincense. And this is myrrh. These are gifts for a king. Precisely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. The three wise men worshipped the tiny king, God's very own son. Before they returned home, though, God spoke to them in a dream. Do not go back to Herod. Yeah, I could tell he was a bad dude. So the wise men took a different road, bypassing Jerusalem, as they returned to their own country. After the Christmas fun is over, it can be easy for us to pack away the spirit of Christmas with our decorations until next year. But we don't have to. We don't have to wait until Christmas rolls around next year to celebrate Jesus. We can celebrate when we sing to Jesus, read our Bible, and show the love of Jesus to others. And we can do all of these things all year long. Now let's celebrate by singing to Jesus right now. Stand to your feet and let's sing together.
love celebrating Jesus through worship. I can't wait to continue celebrating Jesus as we enter into a new year. Our hope for you is that you would continue to hold the spirit of Christmas in your heart as we enter into 2022 and discover more ways to celebrate Jesus and grow in your relationship with him. Let's pray. God, we thank you for all that you have done this year. We thank you for this month that we had with our family and friends and celebrating the gift that you sent Jesus, your son, to be the savior of the world. And God, we just thank you for all you're gonna do in this next year and that we would keep our focus on you and the plan that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy New Year, everybody.